Let's talk about Trey Murphy, who most people probably acknowledge as a really impressive young 3 and D player. His range stands out like crazy. He spots up from the hash mark pretty routinely. Um, this is just normal for him, where he's spotting up from five feet beyond the NBA line and cashing regularly. This is just kind of the shot he takes. Defenses are generally not ready for this kind of range. Trey Murphy spotting up from the hash mark is a really big challenge for defenses because they spread out so much against Trey. And I think this is kind of the first place to start when it comes to Trey's underrated creation, scoring, shot-making upside, which I don't think is discussed nearly as much as it should. Trey Murphy, because of his shot-making and the creation flashes that he's shown that we'll talk about in this video, I think is a breakout star candidate and one of the most underrated ones in the league for sure. So let's go, let's go, let's dive into it. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And if you really enjoyed, consider subscribing to my Patreon for exclusive benefits and such. But Trey Murphy, deep range shooting. That's the impressive thing at first. He, you know, is is a threat to pull from basically anywhere, spreads the hell out of a defense, forces defenses to come out wider. And what that does for Trey Murphy specifically is it opens up his driving game a ton. As Trey was also known for his really good like vertical athleticism on cuts and such and in transition, where, again, spotting up three feet beyond, beyond the line, but this defender has to play him, and Trey can use his speed. And I love his length as a scoring tool. I've talked about length as a scoring tool on this channel plenty of times before, but we see Trey like move the ball around the arm of this rim protector to dunk that in because of how long he is and how coordinated that length is and how good he is at using that length. He's already a really impressive driver with pace attacking closeouts. So C. McKee ended up missing this layup, but again, comes off his screen, attacks, and uses a little bit of like a snake dribble to get back towards the middle. And again, this is a kind of difficult position to be shooting from, but because of his length, Trey jumps forward, ends up getting a wide open lefty finger roll that he doesn't end up hitting. The point being the creation is really impressive too. Trey is really solid using his off arm as a driver at this point. He's really flexible, which is one of his most impressive traits as a driver. Misses this pass, but which we'll get to. But again, Trey spotting up well beyond the NBA line. Roddy has to close hard, and Trey is, go is so good lowering his shoulder, using his off arm to swipe. And then we see the off foot inside hand finish. Trey's finishing is spectacular, as we'll get to more. But again, the finishing leap from his rookie season is unbelievable. Trey shot only 58% from 0 to 3, which was terrible, and then 76% this year, which is incredible. Obviously, much of this is assisted, again, as a vast majority of his shots still are assisted. But even on plays like this, we can see he is creating the finish here. He's using inside hand craft and length to go around Steven Adams and finish at the rim really impressively. Again, same story, Trey spotting up at the hash mark and Mobley has to close out hard because Trey is a dynamite catch and shoot guy. Easily can run here and whew, that is very impressive. Again, I love how much pace Trey tends to play with on these drives where he's not just barreling to the rim. He's patient, he's waiting for an opening and when he sees that his best opening is at the rim scoring himself, he leaps off of two feet, uses his strength to push back Jarrett Allen, and finishes strong. This is impressive ancillary, like off ball creation stuff from like a you know three and D quote unquote wing. The flexibility and like the length are so impressive. I love how he uses his long like long strides here. Despite picking up the ball like outside the free throw line, he easily ends up at the rim just because of how impressive his ground coverage is. Trey can cover so much space with not that many steps, which is a really important trait. And I think um, we'll talk about his role again. Like Trey's usage, despite having a huge increase in minutes this year, really huge increase in his numbers overall. And even when you look at uh, you know a per minute per possession basis, there was still a pretty substantial increase in scoring and especially in efficiency where this season he's up to you know well over league average true shooting when he was just below it as a rookie where there are some really inc impressive creation traits and I think if Trey gets a shot to be more on ball he can unlock these into 
some high, you know, low level star creation. His flexibility is stupendous. I don't love this process as the process as a finisher isn't always great, which we'll get to, but for a 6'9, 6, 6'10 6, guy, he gets so low to the ground here, swerving through these defenders. It's crazy how agile Trey Murphy is, snaking between this dig and almost getting his torso like parallel to the ground. It's so impressive. Again, this is not a great finish attempt there, which I think the process as a driver definitely will have to improve. But point being, some of the flexibility stuff is very impressive. As again, we see him get below Victor Oladipo. And again, I think this is process issue rather than creation where we see Trey get his shoulder below Oladipo. He generates an advantage. He has leverage here. And if he takes a couple more dribbles and goes straight, he can probably get a layup or free throws. But he settles for this very long floater, which is going to be the big the big question kind of for, for him, at least in my eyes, is how can he improve as a decision maker, as a processor, if he's going to harbor more on-ball responsibilities? As he can kind of get stuck playing off of the drive, which definitely does hurt his closeout attacking ability a little bit, where Trey will get into the paint, and sometimes if help comes, or if he isn't really sure what he's doing, or if his initial plan doesn't work out, like he looks like he was going to try to like pivot and score here, he doesn't hit a wide open CJ McCollum, and he goes for a really difficult contested layup that he doesn't end up hitting. Or on this play, where we see Trey, Mur Trey Murphy catch, and again, just kind of not really have much of a plan on a play like this, where he does a really good job pumping, getting him off of his feet, but at this point, the aggressive help has kind of rendered Trey's drive useless. He's not really one to like take a hop step, hold the ball, survey, kick out. At this point, it's very much like he goes to the rim and he shoots the ball, which a lot of the time is really effective and works out, but if Trey is to be a star level or even like below star level creator, he's going to have to improve process wise. And of course, he hasn't had that many creation reps in actuality just because of how low his usage is and how many other on ball threats the Pelicans have. But those are just the improvement points that I know where the secondary creation has already been really impressive in the flashes that we've seen. New Orleans will run him occasionally off of like pistol, down screen, pin down kind of actions. And again, we see we see Trey pull out the snake again, get super low to the ground to get around Anthony Davis and use his length to finish reverse. Really impressive athleticism, handling craft, patience. All of it is really, really impressive stuff for a 6'9 second year player. Again, we see Trey attacking with pace, attacking a closeout. He's not going to... He's not going to, to rush here. He's not going to barrel straight at the rim. I love how he's kind of waiting to see what the defense gives him. And while I definitely think the best play is probably to hit Nance, he's not a great passer and probably never will be. I do think being able to get to your spot is really important as a creator. And Murphy is certainly able to do that. I think that little floater jump shot is going to be critical for his development as a creator. Um, he is a very like rim and three Mori ball kind of player. Um, as you can see, like um, a vast majority of his shots coming either most of them from three or at the rim or very close to the rim. Almost none of his shots in this mid range area, which is an important spot if you're going to be an on ball creator. And little simple shots like this, I think, matter. Great job using jail and pace to get into his spot and hops into a little floater there. That's going to be a shot that if Trey is going to be taking more primary pick and rolls or isos or just more on ball responsibilities when defenses run him off the line and force him um force him to the rim that's going to be a counter that we hope that trey is able to develop again i love this rep here the deceleration uh we'll, we'll start again watching how deep he spots up and how far scotty has to close out obviously scotty's not the best closeout defender in the world and trey uses Really impressive deceleration, slowing down in front of Siakam and finding this floater with his length and his touch. These are the flashes that I think are going to be really important to unlocking Trey's scoring game. Now, as I mentioned before, the passing leaves a lot to be desired as well, which could be a potential limitation for his star ceiling, where he's not one who's going to hit um, you know, like, like a one-pass-away kick-out or skip pass off of his drives. As I mentioned, he's very like tunnel-vision-y, looking to 
shoot the ball on his on his closeout attacks, especially on his drives. Again, a ridiculously a ridiculously uh, deep spot up here where with with a hard closeout. It's it's insane to watch how deep he spots up. It's really funny. But again, has Larry Nance wide open under the paint, but tries a weird Euro step and insanely difficult offhand layup that he probably just didn't need to do. Um, and he's, you know, making life more difficult for himself, which I think isn't like the worst problem to have. Cause again, um, the ability is there, the, the physical tools, some of like the pacing stuff early in drives are really impressive. So I think these kind of more low hanging fruit fixes can definitely come as he grows, as he matures. There were a few little passing flashes where again, a simple pick and roll right here, nothing crazy, but good to see nonetheless, as that's the stuff you're going to want to see more consistently from from um, from Murphy as he plays on the ball more. And I think another like big step that he can take is the pull-up three-point shooting. Almost all of his threes are assisted, catch and shoot again. As we see, 90, like 96% of his career three-point attempts are assisted. And the pull-up three is an important thing. Uh, the pull-up jumper especially. He isn't a super prolific pull-up mid-range shooter either, as we mentioned before, but there are some good flashes where he can use his handle and his height to splash pull-up threes over smaller defenders, which is going to be another tool that Trey is going to want to have to add. I and many others missed pretty hard on Trey Murphy as a prospect. I had him like outside of my first round. I really did not think he was very dynamic as an offensive player. I'm still kind of very surprised at the at the on-ball developments as the kind of like the extent of his creation in college or the vast majority of his stuff was just cutting and spot ups. There was almost nothing else. He, he was very low usage at Virginia. Occasionally some like straight line drives beating a slower defender um, or he was able to come off like a closeout attack again we see. But there isn't really any pacing here like we see in the in the NBA clips, he's just kind of driving straight. Really impressive vertical athleticism dunk there. We see another straight line drive. Again, some finishing tools impressive, which I probably didn't account for enough. But just straight line stuff. Nothing crazy. Nothing to me that indicated that he would develop this kind of creation stuff so quickly. But I was very wrong on Trey, as were many other people I know. He's extremely good already, not just for his creation, but having a 6'9 elite spacer with good defense at this point, with the potential to be great. But I do think that there is real creation upside. I'm unsure if when we get to see it, just because of how many ball handlers the Pelicans have. But if Murphy ever gets traded or he gets a bigger role for some reason, I do think there's a real chance we see him elevate his on-ball scoring game. There is really impressive driving and finishing creation and kind of in the vein of like rookie early career Jason Tatum, who was, you know, a three and rim creator who struggled as, as like a floater mid range guy. I think not that I think Trey is going to be anywhere near that level um, you know, Tatum being a top you know six, seven player in the league. But if Trey can develop his pull up jumper game, if you can develop his mid-range game, the passing improvement, because the flashes and the tools are are, are, are there. There aren't many 6'9", 6'10", guys who handle and drive with pace and finish with touch and craft around the rim like Trey Murphy does, coupled with his shooting. There is something here, and I'm very excited to see how Trey continues to develop. It might not be this year, um, but it could be next year, and I think the star turn for Trey is coming at some point.